All right, now to give us more perspective in terms of how important this G20 declaration in New Delhi actually was and how difficult it would have been to get all of the different nations to in fact come together on the same page. We're being joined in by Richard, Richard Rosso, who's a senior advisor and also a chair in the US-India Policy Studies, and he's joining us live on this broadcast. Now, Mr. Rosso, this, this was going to be a difficult consensus to arrive. Now, the different nations, such as the United States and other nations of the West, and also the representatives from China and Russia, to get them all to agree to a common declaration, uh, how big an achievement do you think that is? It's very significant. Uh, I think you've already covered the issue we knew that was going to cause the most tension, which is how do you articulate shared concerns about Russians invading Ukraine? They managed to find a middle ground that everybody was satisfied with, but didn't ignore the issue. Um, but there were also other issues where there was uh, tension, at least underneath the waters leading up to this. A lot of India's digital, and tool, uh, digital tools, for instance, for financial inclusion, involve a heavy hand of the government. And uh, a lot of uh, other countries uh, usually preserve those roles for the private sector. So how much to tout India's success, which obviously has been you know, quite successful, uh, in light of the fact that uh, private firms want to make sure they don't have uh, market opportunities eroded. Uh, so they managed to bridge uh, that gap. And even on climate change, which is obviously something President Biden himself is very concerned about, as is Prime Minister Modi. But how exactly developed countries uh, would, would convey uh, real meaningful support to developing countries, uh, money, uh, technology transfers. So a lot of contentious issues, and they managed to find agreement in all of them. So uh, this was surprising and uh, very positive. All right. Uh, and also what is interesting is that India has said that it wants the G20 forum to in fact be the voice of the global south. The African Union is now a part of the G20. Uh, how far do you think the G20 has been successful in actually being the voice of the global south? Well, I, I don't know that it necessarily is the voice of the global south per se, right? It's the um, uh, counterpart, I guess, to the G7, which was uh, viewed as a rich country club. Uh, G20 has uh, much more utility because, of course, it includes uh, powerhouses like China and India that aren't part of, uh, of other forms necessarily. But at the end of the day, you know, the G20's real utility is uh, helping uh, major countries work together in times of global financial instability. Uh, India's had a relatively uh, easy, easy go in that front without major new COVID variants that destabilized the global economy. Uh, they, we haven't seen a worsening of energy prices and such. So I, I don't really look at this as the platform to provide the voice to the global south necessarily. But we all need to work together in times of global crisis and having the African right. Union and other developing countries there is vitally important. Absolutely indeed. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Richard Russo, for joining us and getting us those details. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.